Hi, today we're looking at section 4-5, Scatter Plots and Trend Lines. So take something out to write your notes on. Again, pause the video at any time to take notes and complete the check it out problems after each of the examples. We have two learning targets today. Our first one is I can create and interpret scatter plots and I can use trend lines to make predictions. Some vocabulary terms, a scatter plot is a graph with points plotted to show a possible relationship between two sets of data. Correlation describes the relationship between the two data sets. A positive correlation means both sets of data values increase. And a negative correlation, one set of data value increases as the other set decreases. And no correlation means there's no relationship between the data sets. And then a trend line is going to help us analyze our data. So again, our correlation, here are some examples. Positive correlation, you can see the data is all tracking up. Both sets are increasing. Here, as y decreases, or x, everything's going down. Or as y, decrease, y decreases, x increases. And no correlation, the data sets, the points are all over the place. So here's our first example. The table shows the number of cookies in a jar from a time since they were baked. So we want to graph a scatter plot using the given data. So on our graph, we have time baked is our control variable. And the number of cookies we get is going to be our dependent variable. So from the number of days the cookies have been baked. So day one, we have 24 cookies. So we're going to put a plot our first point here at 1 and 24. After two days, we're down to 16 cookies. After three days, we're down to 10. Those are delicious cookies. And after four days, we have seven cookies left. So there we have our scatter plot there. And looking at this, it appears to be a negative correlation. As our days increase, so our days are increasing, the number of cookies we have left are decreasing. So we have a negative correlation. Here's your check it out to graph the scatter plot using the given data. Again, notice how our graphs are labeled, our axes are labeled. We have a title and our x and y axes tell what data is going on those axes. Do the same on yours, please. Our second example, we want to describe the correlation illustrated by the scatter plot. So looking at this example, it's about beat people visiting the beach and their average daily temperatures and number of visitors. So looking at that, it looks like as the average daily temperature increases, the number of visitors we have is also increasing. So this is going to be a positive correlation. One thing I want to point out with your graphs, you may remember this. This little squiggly line here used for graphs tells us that we didn't go up by increments of 4 like they are, we skipped the first 80 markings on this graph. We could do the same thing on our y-axis at times. So this is going to be a positive correlation. And now it's your turn to do a check it out. Again, describe the correlation illustrated by the scatter plot. So if both data sets increase, it's positive. If one increases while the other decreases, it's a negative correlation. And if there's no relationship, then there's no correlation. Now we want to identify the correlation we would expect to see between the pair of data sets that are given here and explain why we expect that. Our first one, the average temperature in a city and the number of speeding tickets given in the city. So this one, the number of speeding tickets has nothing to do with the temperature. So we'd expect to see no correlation between, no correlation with these data sets. Okay, in our second example, the number of t people in the audience and ticket sales. So as the ticket sales increase, the number of people in the audience increases, so therefore we have a positive correlation. And our last one, a runner's time and the distance to the finish line. As time increases, the distance to the finish line is going to decrease, so we're going to end up with a negative correlation when data set goes up and the other data set decreases. Now it's your turn to complete these three check it out problems. In this example, we're going to match the scatter plots to a given situation. So 
We want to pick the scatter plot that best represents the relationship between the age of a car and the amount of money spent each year on repairs. So as cars age, they tend to require uh, more repair. Their costs will go up. And we know the age of a car cannot be negative. So in this case, we can rule out A because we have a negative number here, and that can't happen. So we're down to graphs B and C. So for graph B, it's telling us that when the car is two years old, when a year old it had $300 in repairs, two years old it went down to about 250 then it bounced up, bounced down, and bounced up again. So graph B shows positive values and a positive correlation, so it could represent it. And now looking at graph C, uh, there'd be a positive correlation between the amount spent on repairs and the age of the car. So as the car ages, we're going to end up with more money. <coughs> Excuse me. So in this case, graph, sheet, graph C is showing a negative correlation. So we can take C out because, again, as our cars age, we're going to be spending more money on repairs. So the correct graph here is going to be B. And you can always keep in mind, look at this, as the car is getting older, our cost is going to be increasing. And that's what happens in that plot. Now it's your turn to match the situation, find which graph best describes it. Again, keep in mind, um, time cannot be negative. So to summarize, look at some of the things. You can graph a function on a scatter plot to sh help show relationship in the data. Sometimes a function is a straight line. We can also call that line a trend line. It helps show the correlation between the data sets a little more clearly. It's also helpful when making predictions based on your data. So we're going to do some trend lines now. So here we have a scatter plot that shows the relationship between the total amount of money collected at the concession stand and the total number of tickets sold at a the movie theater. Based on this relationship, we want to predict how much money will be collected at the concession stand and 150 tickets have been sold. So here's our, we had our scatter plots down here. We can draw a straight line to go through as many dots as possible, as many points as possible. And now we want to go out to 150, which is going to be about here. Draw up and across this, and then draw over. So it looks like we're going to expect to see about $800 in concession stand sales at that point. And keep in mind, you're making a prediction. So if you go out a little bit more, you might say, well, that's 150 may go into here, maybe around 775. Um, you're looking for the ballpark. Just get in the ballpark number. Now it's your turn to do a check it out. Again, you're going to want to draw your trend line in here and see after you've sold $500 uh, or how much you're going to need to raise $500, how many rolls you're going to need to sell. To summarize this, we looked at scatter plots. Positive correlation, both data sets are going up, so you're looking for an increase. They're both going up. For a negative correlation, we've got one data set going up and one data set going down. No correlation, there's just no relationship there. A trend line, you're connecting the points and drawing a line and kind of seeing where it's going. It could be a positive or a negative correlation. If you have no correlation, the trend line's not going to help you at all. So bring any questions you have to class. Thank you very much.